What's up, everybody? We're back with another edition of the Vibes Vibe Coaches Corner here with McKinney head coach, Nate Leonard. Coach, you come back to McKinney. You played there, graduated in 2020, 2010. Now you're back there. Just talk about coming home, what it's been like since you've gotten there and getting ready for your first year. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. I'm going to actually grab something to answer your question real quick. This right here is the helmet I wore. So the gold hat tradition is, is alive and well. Um, you know, I, I told people when I was coming back home, you know, I know, I know the, this job means a lot to a lot of people across the state, right? So the AD head football coach has always been highly revered in the state of Texas, but very few of those uh, positions can say that they actually wore the colors and walked the hallways and worked out in the weight room and, and in the facilities. And I have here at McKinney. So it means so much to me coming back. Um, the number one word is excited, right? So I'm excited to come back home. This is where I want to be. This is where I want to stay. Uh, I'm highly invested and have been my entire life in McKinney High School football. I grew up, the Poe was the stadium at the time, right? It's uh, no longer the varsity stadium, but grew up going to games at the Poe and just going to the camps and, and being a McKinney Lion for as long as I can remember. So coming back home is a natural fit. And, and I'm just so excited. I understand the responsibility of the position. So um, I'm putting everything that I have uh, into this position, and uh, I'm blessed to be here. So Coach, now that you are there, um, you know, you've been able to go through spring ball. You are probably doing strength and conditioning camp all summer as well. Um, just what, what are you trying to teach these kids? So kind of what's your philosophy and the culture you want to bring to this team? One of the first questions I asked the guys when I, when I met them was, you know, what year did McKinney high school last win a state championship and who was the head football coach, right? Um, no one could answer the question. And so I think one of the biggest things that I'm attacking, it's, it's not talent. It's not work capacity. It's not love for being a McKinney lion. It's just understanding the responsibility of wearing the gold hat. What does it truly mean to be a McKinney lion um, in everything that you do? And so one of the things that we're really instilling as, as we've come in as a staff is what's called the gold standard, right? And so that's just doing things the best and competing in the classroom and the community and obviously out on the field. So um, talent, like I said, we've got great talent, got a lot of returning players, which I know we'll get to, uh, a lot of tradition here at McKinney High School, uh, recent great seasons and, and a lot of winning happening here. Um, what's that next step, right? That's always what you want to assess and evaluate. For us, it's just understanding the importance of being a McKinney Lion and truly building that cohesive uh, community aspect of it. And, and there's a lot of lions in our community, a lot of people who love our program. Um, and that's the beauty of McKinney, right? Taking people from all different types of households, bringing them together and wearing the blue and gold. And that's what people have loved about McKinney football for as long as I can remember. And so that's really the, the, the approach is um, we've got the talent. We've got the pieces of the puzzle in place. What's the edge, right? What's the glue that's going to hold everything together? And it's just understanding how important your seat is to everybody in this community. Coach, you touched on the talent. Y'all have the talent for sure. Uh, just kind of just bring up a few names. You know, you've got Riley Pettijon, number one inside linebacker in the country. You got Zay Gentry, just committed to SMU. You got Jordan Covington, defensive end, just committed to Oklahoma State. You also have the Pettijon cousins as well coming up in the program. I mean, just a lot of talent overall. What are you looking forward to, uh, you know, being able to coach these guys and um, just uh, kind of teaching them uh, before they go on to the next level? Well, it's a blessing to inherit the team that I did. You know, a lot of coaches are, are not in the seat that I'm in where they can talk about a lot of power four players on their roster. And, and the players that you mentioned, I think the best thing about those players is that they're natural leaders as well, right? So when, when their team is looking for someone to lean on, they're not just going to lean on those guys because of talent. They're going to lean on those guys because of work capacity, uh, work ethic, and truly understanding what it means to um, be a really good football player and be a good person, right? And that's something that we always talk about as well. So for me as a coach, it's exciting. And like I said earlier, that next step is just gaining the absolute trust of everybody. I, transitions are so hard. You know, I don't, I don't want to not address the elephant in the room, right? Transitions are so hard for everybody. Coaching transitions – um, you know, I've hired 13 new varsity coaches to the staff. So it's a lot of new faces. It's a lot of newness. I think 
One of the great things, though, and, and one of the best hires was promoting Anthony So to defensive coordinator. Um, he was on staff, and, and um, you know, the defense was so stingy last year, right? And that's those are the, a lot of the names that you mentioned were those defensive players. So stingy last year. So it's, it's how do you have a transition but still continue to maintain what has worked and what's been great here? And so hiring and promoting Anthony So to defensive coordinator – Obviously, having a lot of continuity on the defense, and from from a bird's eye view as a, as a coach in this chair, it's well, what's working, and, and let's not change everything that's working, right? So it's it's a lot of continuity in the defense, a lot of continuity within the scheme. Um, the offense is completely new, um, and and there's there's a lot of names on offense as well. You know, you got Jeremiah Dowd, you know, a quarterback where our offense is going to be very quarterback centric. It's going to work through. The quarterback, very much like you see in in the Metroplex, but also what you see on Saturdays, everything's going to go through the queue. Um, so Jeremiah Dowd's a name that's definitely going to pop up on on some lists very very soon. He had a great spring. He's tearing it up in seven on seven. You know things like that. Someone who's who's here every day working hard um, and 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 really leading those guys to to trust him and follow him. You know Jabri Bickham is someone who came on the scene in the spring. So. Uh, Jabri has what I call God coaching, right? Like he's 6'4", he's long, um, he's fast, he's got a legit 10-9 track time. And so coaches love that. Well, he's a he's a playmaker for us, right? He's going to be one of our primary targets on offense. But the cool thing about Jabri is when you cross-train him uh, to DB, that's what those power four coaches are seeing with that link. And so he's really picked up steam uh, both as a receiver and as a DB uh, in his recruitment, you know, and then obviously Christian McIntosh, um, he's he's a 25, but he is uh, just a presence, right? Like a big body, um, really good athleticism for his size. And so we're kind of flexing him in and out. Uh, he played hand down tight end last year. He's he's flexing in and out for us in our, in our current scheme on offense. Um, I think the biggest the biggest takeaway from the spring is how the the guys embraced the new offensive scheme. Right. And when you lose two power five tailbacks, um, it, it's hard to uh, just completely change everything. Uh, but we're, we're a little bit more uh, up tempo offense now. Uh, a lot of lots going through the queue. There's going to be a lot more airing it out uh, on Friday nights in the fall. Uh, but that that was probably the biggest learning curve is you got it. You got a great defense, a stingy defense with a lot of returning players. Well, what are you going to do offensively? So it's taking the talents that we have. And it's it's plugging into a system that we we feel best suit those talents, and so that's on both sides of the ball. Um, that's really what's exciting us going into in the fall. Coach, you got the talent. You got your your back home. What's the expectation for year one for you? You know, I think I think you know you leave you leave McKinney High School as a player, uh, you know, and you you go off and you you have a college career and you you kind of leave as a hero, right, so to speak. You know, I would never label myself that, but you kind of leave um, on the shoulders of McKinney and and you go out and you you have a, a college career. I think it's it's picking up where you left off. You know, it's it's coming back home. Uh, the expectations are always going to be high for McKinney High School. No one has higher expectations for McKinney High School than I do, which makes it easier to operate, right? I know the expectations are high. I know this has been a playoff uh, team in contention for back-to-back -back years and, and really good rosters and, and really good ball, right? So, so the expectations are high. I think you, in a realist view, you know, you, you try to navigate a transition as best as you can, and you understand that, that hopefully spring ball and the skills that the UIL allows us in the summer and seven-on-seven -seven circuit and things like that hopefully smooth out some of those transition wrinkles. Um, but expectations couldn't be higher. You know, you have all the talent. Um, now, now it comes down to team chemistry, right? Morale of the locker room, getting the new coaches involved in the community, getting the new coaches uh, in front of our players all the time, every single day. And so that's really what I'm looking at as a head coach is you have all these pieces of the puzzle, but you still got to put them together. And so that's what we're really working on and um, understanding that the expectations are high. Um, and we, we really want to hit the ground running when we get to the fall. All right. Well, this has been another edition of the Vibe Coach's Corner with Coach Leonard and McKinney. Watch out for the Lions next year. They're going to look to have a big year in year one for Coach Leonard. Coach, thanks for hopping on. We'll see you at the games.
We appreciate you. Go Lions.